right, now let's put this guy back in here. Hey, look at that. There's stuff coming out already. Working like a charm now. Oh, yeah. Who's your daddy? Okay. Use the other tool. Could you use a screwdriver to do this? Maybe. Would it be harder? Yep. Alright. Install the tool. Twist this. To get it lined up. Half-inch ratchet. Goes on the end. Over here. So if you wonder what that noise is, you want it to turn clockwise. And then the wrench goes here. Keep tension on it. And this one, well, I got the wrong wrench, but you get the idea. And you just twist. And every once in a while you want to twist this nut because they don't quite turn at the same time. Alright, now you can already see that this is going awry, which is why I prefer my method. But at least this way, you know how to use it. I'm going to finish her off with mine. You want to make sure it's completely bottomed out. It'll still spin, but it'll be bottomed out. Alright, now it's all the way in there. Tighten down my bleeder. Important. Come here. You will find that, yes, these will want to fight you. You want to make sure that this slot is directly straight up and down. Now, some of these are like plus sign things, but see how that's slightly off? You want to line it up right with the middle of the caliper. You want to line it up right with this. So you want it at 12 o'clock. Not quite. Coming around again. And don't ever try to turn it in the opposite direction. Turn it only one way. Turn it clockwise only. And once again, there are different manufacturers have different ways of doing this, but if you're working on a Honda, this is pretty much the rear brake setup. Alright, so make sure that that piston is at 12 o'clock. You can remove your vice grips now. See? No real harm was done to this hose in the making of this movie. New rotors are coated with a substance called Cosmoline. It is a rust inhibitor. If these things sat on the shelf without this coating on it, this would just be one big hunk of rust. Uh, the way I get it off is I just take a little bit of my brake clean, spray it around the outside, get a rag, wipe it down. I'm not worried about this. I'm just worried about where the brake pads make contact. Just an FYI, whether you can see that or not. Stamped on the outside of this is a minimum thickness. In this case, most Honda rotors are actually eight millimeters. When you install the rotor, make sure that your rotor screw holes are lined up with the actual holes on the, on the uh, hub assembly. There you go. And this is the part where you say what I'm about to say. Where did I put those screws? Found them. I take my screws because I know that they're notoriously difficult to get out and I just take the very tip of them and just touch the gook on there. See how I got that little bit of anti-seize just on the end of it? That way when I thread it in it will coat the threads with a little bit of anti-seize and hopefully it will come out the next time I need it to come out. That would be great. I just tap it a couple of times. You don't need to kill it. Your caliper assembly. Reinstall it. Ta da! Now it's time to install your brake pads. When you get brake pads, you get two of them with brake wear indicators on them. Two pads. Now, personally, when these come from the factory, 
they come with the indicator on the inside pad and it's facing down. And what I mean by indicator is this, this little metal tab, when a pad gets worn down far enough, actually makes contact with the rotor and makes a heck of a noise. That's what that's there for. That's why it's called an indicator. The indicators, in my personal opinion, should always be put in the same orientation. And on the back ones, that is in the down position. So the indicator should be at the bottom. Uh, and I, I, I call it on the leading edge because the first, well, technically the first place as the car is rolling in a forward direction to make contact is with that. I see it a lot where people put them on with them at, on the top. I hate that. <laughs> I put them down here on the bottom. Before I install the brake pads, the outer brake pads, those are interchangeable. I mean, you got those here, there, and everywhere. For installing the brake pads, I take a little bit of my anti-seize compound. When I say a little bit, that's what I mean. And I just put a little bit where it would make contact with those springs, a little bit where it makes contact with the caliper on the outside and the inside, just like in front disc brakes. Same thing over here. And you see how much I'm putting on. It's just a little bit. There. All the important parts are now lubricated. Install it inside the caliper. And you can sort of gauge how easily it moves. Sometimes they, they don't want to go in and just like that, a little smack will do you. But you want to make sure that they, you know, they've got some movement to them. Now quite simply, and this is the reason why you had to put that at 12 o'clock, is because on the back of this inner pad there's that pin that sticks up. That pin needs to fit inside that slot that you use to turn it in. See? It needs to fit inside the slot. If it doesn't fit inside the slot, you're going to get a spongy brake pedal. And the reason is, is because the caliper is going to make contact with this pin instead of the whole brake pad. So it's going to, it's going to be pushing this in an odd uh, orientation. Also, you want to make sure that these are lined up like that. If they're not, if they're twisted like this one was, it won't necessarily go on because there's these little slots on the caliper itself when you go to put this on that that needs to go into. See how nice that was? I sometimes put, once again, just a small, like that much, anti-seize on these bolts. That way I can get them back out again should I need to. You'll hear a little bit of noise when you spin it. That's the new pads that are there. But other than that, you're done. You did it. Good job. One last part of this operation I want you to do before you, you know, after you get to, after you're done with your brake job and you get your wheels on and everything else, is I want you to pump the brake pedal until you feel like you got a brake pedal again. Just like with front brakes, uh, there's a there's a little bit of space that's there between the caliper and the brake pads. If you don't take that space up, the first couple of times you hit the brake pedal, you're not going to have brakes. You don't want to do that. So do this, you'll be fine. Next, top off the master cylinder just a little bit to try and replace some of the displaced fluid that uh, you took out when you uh, cracked the bleeder loose. You're good to go. All right, now you open up the, uh, the hydraulic system on the brakes. Do you need to bleed it? No. Because you pinched off the line up at the top, fluid did not flow in that direction back toward the master cylinder. It also could not flow out. So when you compress the piston, you just displaced all the fluid that was behind the piston. You didn't do anything else to it. So there should be no air in the system if you do it like I did in the video. Uh, if you do run into a problem and you do have to bleed the brakes, no big deal, bleed the brakes. And if you use the setup that I've got here that I've shown you in the other disc brake video, uh, you can see the air actually coming out of the bleeder and you'll know if you've gotten it all out. Yeah, do the same thing on the other side. It's not rocket science, but the hardest part is turning that piston back in. Most important thing to remember, in my opinion, is a little bit of silicone around the outside of that dust boot so it doesn't get all twisted up on you. Other than that, you should be good to go. I am Eric the Car Guy. Uh, as always, you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com, and uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I uh, usually post things on a daily basis about what I'm doing, so if you want to be in the know about what's happening in the world of Eric the Car Guy, that's where you go. And, of course, the website is always there for your viewing. That's it. Be safe. Have fun. Stay dirty. See ya.